Hey there, Aries. Welcome to your reading for the week of January 31st. This is part two. Uh, part one is linked up in the pinned comment down below, so make sure to check that out. But this is part one we've already covered right here. Uh, so for the um, snake card, which said, I, thr I threw at the beginning of the other reading, says creation on it, you have the sea otter, which says transformation. Clearly, I feel you're going through a transformation. I even said in the first reading on the snake card that I was feeling it was more like a shedding of your skin, not so much creation. Are you? I feel you're creating a new beginning for sure. You have the fool card here, but it feels more like a transformation. So uh, that makes much more sense to me. I also feel like things are becoming more playful, like a little bit less serious. Remember in your first reading, we were also talking about kind of breaking out of anything that is a hamster wheel, anything that is the same every single day. It's like things can get boring. Like if you're driving to work every single day, it's like back and forth, back and forth. You get into this routine that's never broken up. Uh, I kind of see that here. That's um, I see that a routine needs a sh something to be added. I, I feel like maybe when we get to these points where things get boring, maybe we need to do something that's fun. Maybe we need to go to the gym. Maybe we need to change our energy just to mix things up. And I kind of got that in the first reading as well. Uh, with the Nine of Cups, you have you showing up. The King of Wands, love it. Uh, showing up in a very strong position with that Nine of Cups. I would definitely wish, uh, you know, I would dream big at this time. I would make a big wish at this time as well. You have Jupiter entering into your first house this year, later on this year. It's going to retrograde out back into Pisces, but you know, uh, once we get towards the end of the year, then it's going to move forward at the end of the year, at the very end of year, the year into Aries. So really good time for you. Aries. Uh, and so I would dream big. I would make big wishes. Again, we have Neptune and Pisces, which, you know, is probably your 12th house, depending on when you were born. doesn't really matter where it's happening for you. Uh, I feel like there are a lot of like things that you could be manifesting uh, at this time. I feel like it's like a good time for you to take risk with that, um, with the King of Wands as well. He has these salamanders all over his cloak. He also has a salamander right here. Salamanders in the tarot represent protection from fire. They kind of say that maybe it's a good time to take some bigger risks, to do some things that you've wanted to do for a long time. Uh, it doesn't say, like, obviously don't do anything dangerous, but, you know, it's like saying if you're taking a calculated risk to start a business, to ask a person out, to do whatever, it's like those risks, you're kind of protected at this time. Uh, with the Four of Wands, we talked about this in the first reading. Some of you are clearly going through divorce or separation. With the Four of Wands, the Nine of Swords is like uh, a nightmare. Part of me is wondering if you have to end a nightmare here, Aries. Like if you're in a separation situation, but maybe it's kind of like going back and forth. Maybe you're not sure if you want to separate or if you should separate or what direction you should go in. Um, the Nine of Swords could say you actually do know what direction to go in. And um, I kind of get that feeling for some of you. So maybe you need to make a decision. For others, again, I feel there is a very strong, for pretty much everyone, this is a collective message for sure. Uh, everyone has a very strong desire for freedom. The only problem is, is I think we're all waiting for permission for someone to say, oh, you can go start your business. Oh, you can go ask that person out. Oh, you can go get into that relationship. It's almost like we're waiting for um, a sign or a symbol from the universe. Um, so where is the sign or the symbol going to come from? Uh, right here. Like I said in your first reading, it's going to come from your heart. It's like there is nobody is coming to give us permission. Uh, that's just the time that we are in right now. And, uh, you know, I've been really encouraging people to take the lead for like two years now in their own life because, um, you know, and it's not easy, especially now because there's like heightened fear and things like that. But it's like pretty much what we have to do. Uh, with the Three of Swords, you have the Ace of Swords. Definitely a victory coming in for you. Uh, could be a sacrifice. Um, I kind of said this in your first reading. The, there's a palm frond right here on the Ace of Swords, and palm fronds in the tarot represent sacrifices or making a sacrifice. But the Ace of of swords is a victory. If you're thinking about moving away from something that even though with the three of swords here, it could make you sad. It's like you're moving towards this beautiful new beginning, one where you have these, you know, pure intentions, like we were talking about in the first reading. Uh, really good for you, Aries. Uh, with the sixth house there, you have the 11th house, which says community on it. Pretty much every single sign is getting something about working on a team or about teamwork because, uh, again, teamwork makes a dream work. I've said it to pretty much everyone. I'm going to probably keep saying that for the next, um, I don't know, 10 years. <laughs> if, if YouTube still exists in 10 years, I will probably be saying it for 10 years. If something else exists, I'll probably be saying it for 10 years on something else. Um, so what I would say here is that we definitely, co-creation is our best friend. 
uh, at this time. Uh, I just said it to Libra as well. It's like you can co-create with a person without actually even having to interact with them. It's like, you know, if you're growing a business, there are plenty of business books. If you take someone's advice from a book, it's like you are co-creating with that person. Same thing in love. There are plenty of books on love. There are plenty of books on everything that you can possibly imagine. If you're taking advice and putting it into practice, you're co-creating with that person. So again, I, I feel like people, it's like, I always get comments from people who tell me how antisocial they are. I'm always like, okay, well, first off, get over it. Number two, um, read a book, right? If you're really that antisocial, um, because you know that doesn't require you to interact with anyone. So, um, you know, like I said, there are ways to do it without actually having to work with a person. And uh, it's going to be very important. Uh, with the Four of Swords, you have the Two of Pentacles. More play in your life for sure. Um, we said this with the Sea Otter card there, which the Sea Otter card says transformation, but Sea Otters are very playful creatures. And even in some of the other decks that I have, the Sea Otter is more of a playful energy, more of an energy of needing to play with things and have fun, needing to enjoy yourself. And that's kind of like what I feel here. Sorry, wrong camera. Um, I feel the two of pentacles work hard, play hard. So I feel like you need more enjoyment or you need to do things that you enjoy more with this two of pentacles energy. Uh, like I said, especially if you have something that is like a zombie routine, you know, where you're just like back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Um, you know, I totally get it. It's like, um, I, I am, I actually have a video that I'm editing right now that is a day in the life of me doing videos of, of me doing tarot. I do the seven days a week and, um, it pretty much takes me all day. <laughs> and, uh, it's funny because I was like watching that video. I was like, oh my God, I, like I am in a zombie routine basically. But um, it, it's a good thing because it got me to, thinking to like go do something else to shake up the routine. Uh, I have a lot of Aries energy in my chart as well. So, um, you know, uh, what I would say is it makes perfect sense coming up here. But I feel like more play. Uh, with the uh, Six of Swords, you have the a Wheel of Fortune. Love it. Definitely a new beginning coming in for you for sure. Um, especially, you know, especially in this diagonal. This, this is going right here up to that fool. The Wheel of Fortune is a change. We need to take control of the wheel. The wheel on the Wheel of Fortune is always spinning. It is always moving in a new direction or a different direction. We take control with our vibrations. This snake over here is kind of like in a squiggle. And the snake represents uh, vibrations or changing your vibrations. So like I said, in the first reading, I would definitely be keeping it positive at this time, focusing on what you do want. With the chariot, you have the four cups. Hmm. You know, I feel like this is, like I said, in the chariot, it's like you're moving away from something, which I've been saying to you for, I don't know, like six months now. It seems to me like a lot of you, it, I, I always pick up on it as moving energy or like leaving the nest. I think I've said that to you before or leaving home. It, you don't have to be doing that. You, It just could feel like that. Like if you're leaving a job you've been at for 20 years and going to another one, that would be like leaving home. That would be like leaving home for the first time, you know? So I feel like a lot of you are kind of making these big significant changes like that and it's probably due to dissatisfaction with the four of cups four of cups is like trying to manifest things he's manifesting those cups but it's like not exactly what he wants sometimes i feel like it says that, that this card says you need to accept those things you know that you are manifesting other times i do feel like it is saying the grass is definitely greener on the other side usually the four cups says the grass is not greener on the other side but for you um based off your last row here i do do feel that the grass is greener on the other side. Uh, so let's look into it. Uh, in your next row here, you have the horseshoe, it says good luck, and you also have the owl, which says good advice from a wise person. Um, again, uh, like I said, co-creating with other people, reading books from people who are smarter than you, learning from people who are smarter than you. Definitely, uh, so this is like a collective energy because it's come up for almost everyone. But I like the horseshoe, definitely a lot of luck coming in for you as well. But I feel like you know you could be making a lot of progress with this um, with that owl card um, based off of information from other people. There's a great book. Um, it's a newer book by uh, James Altucher uh, and it's called Skip the Line. And uh, definitely this reading is reminding me of that where uh, in that book, he talks about reading books from other people and how it's like we've never lived in a time where there's so much information at our finger fingertips where we can literally learn from a person and we can skip the line. We can skip ahead. We can you know kind of gain a, a major advantage. I see that for you here where it's like there could be information and business and love, whatever, you're gonna have to go and find it. You're gonna go have to go find the person or you have to do the research. But if you do it, you're gonna be like skipping the line. Uh, with the Fool, you have the King of Swords, Wisdom. Uh, the Fool, uh, the um, King of Swords represents a mentor. 
So I do feel like this could be a person who is wiser or just older. It could be any gender. Uh, it could also be a person who writes books, like I said, or does YouTube videos, take it how it resonates. But I feel like there's a lot of good information out there for you with the King of Swords. Um, and, you know, that's a good thing. Uh, with the Ten of Cups, you have the Six of Swords twice in this row. So clearly on the other side of the Six of Swords, on the other side of leaving something behind completely is the Ten of Cups. Your happily ever after, basically. <laughs> uh, love it. And with the Queen of Cups, you have the Page of Wands. Yeah, enjoy the adventure. I feel like you need to go on the adventure. Enjoy the adventure. I keep getting enjoyment here in general. Like I said, maybe you like going to the movies, maybe you like uh, walking in the woods, whatever it is, doesn't matter. I would just go do it. I, I, I really, really feel that you need to do something that you love doing, that you enjoy doing. Um, you know, it's in those moments where we recharge our batteries. It's in those moments where we get answers. You know, I always tell a story that years ago I was stuck for like three years doing nothing. And it wasn't until I started enjoying myself. I like literally wouldn't allow myself to go have fun because I was like beating myself up for like not finding success or whatever, whatever wherever my brain was at the time, right? And um, it like literally wasn't until I released that and started having fun that I started getting answers on like what to do. Um, and I truly believe it was because I was like trying to force things to happen. I wasn't just chilling out and like, you know, going with it and just still living my life, right? And I kind of feel that for you. I don't think you're in that bad of a place. But, you know, what I would say here is I would move towards that more positive energy. Uh, I like the way this looks for you, Aries. Definitely some good stuff. So thank you for being here, Aries. Really appreciate it. Make sure to watch your sun, moon, and rising for a full picture of what's going on for you at this time. Uh, also, part one is linked up down below. So thank you for being here, Aries. Really appreciate it. And definitely enjoy your week.